Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Okay. So what we're going to do a little bit, at least in the beginning. We're going to first um, read for you the Fukan Zazengi, which is the first thing in your chant, little chant books. That Thank you, Kim, for making these up and sending these out. You don't right. have to read along with us. If you prefer, just, we're just going to read to you. So there's no reason you're not going to have to say anything. When I said you needed these, I've been thinking about that, actually. But you might want to refer to them <coughs> after. But it'd be probably nice just to listen. Yeah. And um, we were just speaking a moment ago, the two of us, about how, um, especially classically, when one is chanting in Japanese, there's that monosyllabic, that's why we use the mukugyo, you know, Kanji, Zai, Bo, like that. And it's very bland. Yeah. It's not what we're going to do now. Imagine this is a, uh, not a bedtime story because you want to keep you awake. <laughs> <laughs> but we're actually, we're like telling you this, like, oh, this is important. So listen up. Fukunzazengi. The way is basically perfect and all pervading. How could it be contingent upon practice and realization? The Dharma vehicle is free and untrammeled. What need is there for concentrated effort? Indeed, the whole body is far beyond the world's dust. Who could believe in a means to brush it clean? It is never apart from one right where one is. What is the use of going off here and there to practice? <laughs> and, yet, and yet, if there's the slightest discrepancy, the way is as distant as heaven from earth. If the least like or dislike arises, the mind is lost in confusion. Suppose one gains pride of understanding and inflates one's own enlightenment, glimpsing the wisdom that runs through all things, attaining the way, clarifying the mind, raising an aspiration to escalate the very sky, one is making the initial partial excursions about the frontiers, but is still somewhat deficient in the vital way of total emancipation. Need I mention the Buddha, who was possessed of inborn knowledge? The influence of his six years of upright sitting is noticeable still. Or Bodhidharma's transmission of the mind seal the fame of his nine years of sitting is celebrated to this day. Since this was the case with the saints of old, how can we today dispense with negotiation of the way? You should therefore cease from practice based on intellectual understanding, pursuing words, following after speech, like now. <laughs> and learn the backward step that turns your light inwardly to illuminate yourself. Body and mind of themselves will drop away, and your original face will be manifest. If you want to attain suchness, you should practice suchness without delay. For Sanzen, a quiet room is suitable eat and drink moderately, cast aside all involvements, and cease all affairs. Do not think good or bad. Do not administer pros and cons. Cease all the movements of the conscious mind, the gauging of all thoughts and views. Have no designs on becoming a Buddha. Sansen has nothing whatever to do with sitting or lying down. Now, at the sight of your regular sitting, spread out thick matting and place a cushion upon it. 
sit either in the full lotus or half lotus position, or any other way you can. <laughs> in the full lotus position, you first place your right foot on your left thigh and your left foot on your right thigh. In the half lotus, you simply press your left foot against your right thigh or vice versa. You should have your robes and belt loosely bound and arranged in order. Then place your right hand on your left leg and your left palm face upward on your right palm, thumb, tips, touching. Thus sit upright and correct bodily posture, neither inclining to the left nor to the right, neither leaning forward nor backward. Be sure your ears are on a plane with your shoulders and your nose in line with your navel. Place your tongue against the front roof of your mouth with teach, teeth and lips both shut. Your eyes should always remain open and you should breathe gently through your nose. Once you have adjusted your posture, take a deep breath, inhale and exhale. Rock your body right and left, and settle into a steady, immobile sitting position. Think of not thinking. How do you think of non-thinking? Non-thinking. This in itself is the essential art of zazen. The zazen I speak of is not learning meditation. It's simply the dharma gate of repose and bliss the practice realization of totally culminated enlightenment. It's the manifestation of ultimate reality. Your traps and snares can never reach it. Once his heart is grasped, you're like the dragon when he gains the water, or like the tiger when she enters the mountain. For you must know that just there in Zazen, the right Dharma is manifesting itself. And that from the first dullness and distraction are struck aside. When you arise from sitting, move slowly and quietly, calmly and deliberately. Do not rise suddenly or abruptly. And surveying the past, we find that transcendence of both unenlightenment and enlightenment and dying while either sitting or standing have all depended entirely on the strength of Zazen. In addition, the bringing about of enlightenment by the opportunity provided by a finger, a banner, a needle, or a mallet, and the effecting of realization with the aid of a hasu, a fist, a staff, or a shout, cannot be fully understood by discriminative thinking. Indeed, it cannot be fully known by the practicing or realizing of supernatural powers either. It must be deportment beyond hearing and seeing. Is it not a principle that is prior to knowledge and perceptions? Mm -hmm. Well, this being the case, intelligence or lack of it doesn't matter. <laughs> Between the dull and sharp-witted, there's no distinction. If you concentrate your effort single-mindedly, that in itself is negotiating the way. Practice realization is naturally undefiled. Going forward in practice is a matter of everydayness. In general, this world and other worlds as well, both in India and China, equally hold the Buddha seal and overall prevails the character of this school, which is simply devotion to sitting, total engagement in immobile sitting. Although it is said that there are as many minds as there are persons, still, they all negotiate the way solely in Zazen. Why leave behind the seat that exists in your home and go aimlessly off to the dusty realms of other lands? If you make one misstep, you go astray from the way directly before you. You have gained the pivotal opportunity of human form. 
Do not use your time in vain. You are maintaining the essential working of the Buddha way. You are maintaining the essential working of the Buddha way. Who would take wasteful delight in the spark from the flintstone? Mm. Besides, form and substance are like the dew on the grass, destiny like a dart of lightning, emptied in an instant, vanished in a flash. Please, honored followers of Zen, long accustomed to groping for the elephant, do not be suspicious of the true dragon. <clears throat> Devote your energies to a way which directly indicates the absolute. Revere the person of complete attainment who is beyond all human agency. Gain accord with the enlightenment of the Buddhas. Succeed to the legitimate lineage of the ancestor's samadhi. Constantly perform in such a manner, and you are assured of being a person such as they. Your treasure store will open of itself, and you will use it at will. Can we have a bell on that? <laughs> Just to punctuate. That's your story. What's it like to hear it like that? Is it different? Yes. How so? I mean, we didn't do anything special, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kathy? Relational. Yeah. Made it relate. It's not something we're reading out here. Mm -hmm. It seems like you can't hang on to it. <laughs> you can't hang on to anything. Yeah. Bridget? Well, the fact that you took turns, and so it gave us a little bright sort of <coughs> intonation of your voices and your, your speech, and so it seemed more present as you went through each mm -hmm. part. Not, we don't just drone on. <laughs> <laughs> How is she going to respond next? Yeah. It felt like you were really talking to yeah, like we having were. a conversation with us, and um, also not reading the words made it feel more like music or poetry to me. That's not what we were just talking about. Yeah, yeah, because it is. I'll say more about where this came from and some other things tomorrow in the Dharma talk. But this was really written just for like regular folks. It wasn't a monastic thing. And you can hear that, even though, you know, it's still archaic language in, in certain ways. But are there words or phrases or, that really caught you? you? You could refer to it, you have it, but I mean, don't, you don't have to go searching around. Like even, do you remember something like, you know, that always gets me, or this I heard for the first time. Or, You're shaking your head no, but it must be something. Well, I don't remember the words that struck me for the first time. It's always been comforting. But each time it's comforting and with different words and in different mm -hmm. ways. And so. yeah. It makes it seem so easy. What's that? It makes it seem so easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, as Joker used to say, it's simple, but it's not easy. Did Sandra get The drop in body and mind always get yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Non-thinking. 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 That's a big one. We'll be, we'll be talking about that one. Non yeah, non-thinking. You do not thinking. Non-thinking. Non okay. For me, there was, and maybe it's because it was the two of you speaking. Yeah. For me, it felt sacred. There's a sacredness to it. Ah. You, you got that. Yeah. But that's what our actual intention. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's, that's the gift to us when we get to sit in these seats, is to offer in that way. And to have it received in that mm -hmm. way. Here's Ellen. Every, Ellen and then more. Um, what stood out to me this time was uh, Zazen has nothing to do with sitting or lying down. 
Yeah, we so often associate it with sitting down in the zendo, don't we? Well, yes. And then what puzzled me even more and always does is then there's a very detailed explanation of sitting. <laughs> I know. Exactly. What's up with that, you know? <laughs> That's one of the things we'll be exploring because, you know, uh, one of our focuses for this week is on form and the forms of the zindo. And we're using this as a, as a primary. And so like all good Zen teachings, you're going to have the form side and the emptiness side. You're going to have these two and how they, how they reflect each other. So thank you for bringing that up. But you noticed um, something that is an echo of the first two paragraphs. So it's nothing to do with sitting or lying down. You know, the way is all basically per perfect and all pervading, right? Um, so it has nothing to do with sitting or, or lying down, right? And yet, and yet. And yet. So the, the detailed instructions are the yeah and yet part, right? Yeah. yeah. And I see it. Michael has his hand up. We're going to have Daniel, Daniel and then we'll have Michael next. Uh, I was really <clears throat> like amazed when I forget, did you start Peg? Yeah. Yeah. And then Flint, when you started, it just like, I wasn't ready for it. And yeah, so I thought you were just going to listen to Peg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it really, it shocked me. And it, it, um, it made me feel like the text was more alive than, mm -hmm. than it's felt in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that you could, any one of us could practice, is if we have a Dharma friend and there's something that you're studying or working with that's like this, is, this isn't like tiny and short, but it's not too long. You could say, let's, let's read it together and, and then see what that's like to do it with someone. We may do that during the, this week to see what that's, that's like. Really nice in this dialogic way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because also some of the, like when I said, and yet, yeah. I followed her and after that first one, he's like, oh, wait a minute, this is like alive. There's something to it. Yeah. Thank you. Michael? So I was struck by think of not thinking because my, my brain broke when you read that. That's the point. But fortunately, it tells you how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll just say to myself, pure aliveness. That's sort of a key. Mm -hmm. Just pure aliveness. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was struck by your reading and the, the mode of your reading, the tone of your voice, etc as a trust that we can understand it. It's like, yes. You know, in the spirit of the original right. letter, mm -hmm. it's like, there are some difficult parts, but we can work on this together. Mm -hmm. I love that. Say so you could hear, like this morning, we began to talk about trust. And say so you could hear that we actually trust you to receive this, and it's not like something lofty or... Mm -hmm. yeah. And we know that you're going to make sense of it in your own way, not in some canonical way. Or not like some catechism, right? Yeah, the part that, that really touched me was you have gained the pivotal opportunity of human form. Oh. It's so touching. Mm -hmm. It's it just really moved me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like just being here is this immense gift. Mm -hmm. What a gift, yes. Yeah. What's <clears throat> jumped out with me is the part that says there's no hole here. I'm not going to become a better person or more spiritual or any of those things. I'm just going to sit. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's hard for my brain. To Have no designs on becoming a Buddha. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had something? Yeah, there was a, I, I kept having this, uh, as, as you kind of alluded earlier, this, uh, there would be this thinking, not thinking, or this, uh, admonition against intellectual striving, but then there would be these kind of mis mysterious sort of words that that I started to think about. Well, what, what does that mean? And then I would catch myself. And, mm. and between that paradox, it was I found myself being amused 
with a sense of sort of humor about it. And then I thought that the humor is sort of like a connection to some humanness and some sort of aliveness. Mm -hmm. Like we're all in this it's together. Playful. Mm -hmm. There's a playfulness to it. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a playfulness to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard a teacher one time, someone ask him about humor. And he said, oh, humor is making a space where there was no space. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's like opening the space, which is what you're alluding to. Yeah. In a way. It's the space for play. Mm -hmm. The play of emptiness. Mm -hmm. Because you can't figure it out. It's saying mm -hmm. it's not about intellect, and yet you're offered this thing. So you only meet it in non-thinking. Because your thinking takes you away from it. That, you're starting to get the idea of non-thinking. Oh, non-thinking. How does it move in me without my... Mm. Mm, something there. <laughs> um, yeah, you're reading it to us, felt very loving. Like a, a real gift, you know, like, yeah, from the heart. And, um, uh, okay, the piece itself. Um, like, this is his offering to, to everyone. Everyone can, can partake of this. It's not for the elite. It's for everyone. That, that really comes across in, in all, even though it's hard to understand some of it, um, you know, it's very egalitarian. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. One of the translations of Foucault's Azangi is universal recommendations for Nazo. Mm -hmm. And it's safe to say that this piece has touched literally millions of people in the 600 years since it was written. So I think, which of my emails would have that? <laughs> I just have to say again, because it struck me as people were talking, and I was, I'm still just so overcome with emotion hearing you all read that. That what it likens to for me is when you say the refugees, mm -hmm. immersing body and mind deeply in the way, entering deeply the merciful ocean mm -hmm. of Buddha's way. That's what it felt like when it was washing over me. Bringing mm -hmm. harmony yeah, with yeah. everyone yeah. without hindrance. Yeah. That's a lovely connection. There's another piece that I don't know if this makes sense. I'm not, I'm not trying to draw attention to us per se. And yet, we haven't been here in a while. And we're here together. And so if we sat here, and with the qualities you and other people were talking about of, if we said, blah, 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 blah. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Together, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. but we were we embodied every bit of what you're talking about, but the content didn't make any sense at all. Would you still be touched? And it would still be an offering from the same place. For for example, it would be really easy if, if we just had you know the French version or the Spanish version. She read it to us. You would be crying. You know, you'd feel it, even if you didn't understand. What she's, what she would be saying, you know. Just a special teaching is beyond words and letters, right? Mm -hmm. So you're saying it's the offering. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, the it's the embodied the offering. The embodied offering. Yeah. The embodied offering. I, some of you have heard this before, I think, or maybe some of you were there. I don't know. But one time I was uh, leading inquiry, and it was actually at Austin Zen Center. We we're still in that that building, and that day I used as a prompt uh, a Pablo Neruda poem. And um, <clears throat> it just so happened that one of our good friends and Alexander Zasati was here. He was from Mexico City, you know, he lives here. And his parents were in town, so he brought his parents. And they were older, very dignified people from Mexico City. And I happened to have the poem in English, but I had it in Spanish. And so I asked Mr. Zasati, the senior, I said, would you just read it to us in Spanish, the original? <laughs> we just were knocked out, you know, even if you didn't understand all the words, because you could feel his heart, you know? 
so we're trying to you know feel Dogen's heart, and because he wants you to, and so we're saying, can you feel ours? Because we want to feel yours. Um, uh, then we're practicing together. And it's a way that we're kind of immersed together in the six paramitas of generosity and morality and patience and vigor and concentration and wisdom. You know, we're just together in that. It's not some quality of a person. It's what we're immersed in together. It's not, uh, well, it's like we, we weren't performing. It wasn't performative, even though we put our whole self into it. Yeah, so there's that, that quality of it. Um, it's wanting something for you. <laughs> Any other reflections, discussions? There's no rush, to, uh, but there's no requirement either. It's just so delicious to be here together. <laughs> I can't even describe the deliciousness of it. Your poem now is inside of one. Oh? I read it all the time. Do you? <laughs> I have a poem for you. So does Peg. Yeah. <laughs> Before we sit. Yeah. Um, and do we have Kenyan or something after this? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, we, so, sure. because we've been sitting, yeah. so make sure you have some time. And we now, have to put things back. Yeah, let's go ahead and. Okay. Do you want to do those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, today is Easter. A Christian thing. Yeah. And so, I have a, a very, very short poem. Um, by a, a poet that many of you know quite well, Marie Howe. And it's her poem, Easter. And the uh, imagery, of course, is about what this day is about in the Christian story. But she never mentions names. So you don't have to make it into that. But there's uh, what, the reason I want to read it and comment on it a bit is because there's a universality to it that has to do with what we're here for. To, um, to be embodied, to turn toward suffering, ours and others, to be made new in that process for body and mind to drop away and then our original base to be manifest. To understand that we're limited and we feel pain in these bodies and yet there's something of the sacred and something much bigger that we can touch even though we're a conditioned being, we can touch the unconditioned. So I, those are words I'm using. You can also easily uh, use the, the Christian words. It doesn't matter. I'm talking about the universality of this. But the imagery is very particular. So listen. Two of the fingers on his right hand had been broken. So when he poured back into that hand, it surprised him, it, it hurt him at first. And then the whole body was too small. Imagine the sky trying to fit into a tunnel carved into a hill. He came into it in two ways, from the outside, as we step into a pair of pants, and from the center, suddenly, all at once. Then he felt himself awake in the dark, alone. So I'll just read it through one more time. And let yourself imagine those times in which you come into your own body and feel your wholeness in the body and that which is beyond. Two of the fingers on his right hand had been broken. So when he poured himself into that hand, it, it surprised him, it hurt him at first. And the whole body was too small. Imagine the sky 
trying to fit into a, a tunnel carved into a hill. He came in to it two ways, from the outside as one steps into a pair of pants, and from the center, suddenly, all at once. Then he felt himself awake, in the dark, alone. That's enough for that one. What do we do in the night with a body? And also with knowing we're not just the body, that there's something greater, but it's not different than what I am, or who I am, or what you are. How does one practice through every night? in every dark place that we find, in every beautiful place we find. And we made new each time. And we sit for long periods of time. Sometimes it's like we're entering our body again, and like, oh, that hurts. <laughs> you know, but we're, but, we're, but we're coming alive too. We're feeling our body, our karma, our aliveness. Uh, and realize that the way we think about ourselves and perceive ourselves and reflect on ourselves, making ourselves a small object of our consciousness, that small object is way too small. And yet, so we find ourselves awake. But not alone. Alone, together. And sometimes waiting to be discovered. <laughs> and some people like that. Is that you? Is that you? What? This is a poem I hadn't ever um, encountered before. It's by Dogen. And it felt appropriate for us tonight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Gathered for evening zazen, we see the morning come. This is the best part, and we have no desire to sleep. Thus we understand bendo, the true practice of the way. The voice of the valley reaches my ears, the light of the moon reaches my eyes. Concerning zazen, there's nothing to attend to. Gathered for evening zazen, we see the morning come. This is the best part, and we have no desire to sleep. Thus we understand bendo, the true practice of the way. The voice of the valley reaches my ears. The light of the moon reaches my eyes. Concerning zazen, <coughs> there's nothing to attend to. that same feeling of the morning, of waking up, mm -hmm. and without trying to be anyone particular, but realizing this. Mm -hmm. 